Thanks okay. for uh, thanks for sitting down here at the New York Stock Exchange, for Fort Knox. <laughs> now you've been at BlackBerry for uh, it's about five years now. About five, yeah. And uh, a lot of people didn't think that you were in for the long haul, but you've just signed through 2023. That'd be 10 years. You were at Sybase for like 12 years, yes, right? So this is, this is a long tenure. What made you see long-term in BlackBerry? Well, I'm one of those emotional guy. You know, I, I think this now becomes part of me. And so I, I would prefer to answer that question first that way. Um, and you know, there's a lot about the business that is interesting. Mm -hmm. It could go to many different directions. We got a lot of assets to play with. Um, and I'm sure we're going to make some mistake on a, along the way. But on the other hand, I think the, where the world is going, um, you know, where we have in technology, I think it matches up pretty well. So the strategy is pretty good. And we got the company to do well now and stable, make money and have cash and all that. We're going to start investing that. That's always an exciting phase. Right. All right. So, so I, and again, you know, it's emotionally I'm vested. Uh, so I want to see this well. No, anyway, so that, that's the reason why. What is it about turnarounds? Because when you, when you went to Sybase, Oracle was beating up Sybase because they hadn't made that shift into applications. You know, Sybase had to make some changes and you got that turned around. Now, uh, BlackBerry, you say that turnaround is complete. BlackBerry's making money again. Not focused on phones anymore, focused on security and the internet of things. I mean, you're a sucker for punishment. What is it that you find yes. these things <laughs> that need fixing and get them working again? A couple of things. Um, first of all, at Sybase we're a little different because um, I, was, I really want to get into a, a software company. And, and so I, I, I'm a technology nut. I, I love technology. And it's one of those things that business you know, misstep doesn't imply you don't have good technology. Mm. And, and so that's one thing. I say, you know, you have good technology, you have a way to come back. I mean, engineer a little differently. So that's the reason why. Um, nothing really, I wasn't really looking for troubles, uh, so to speak, uh, but troubles find me, you know, but <laughs> they, they tried, they, they, you know, a lot of people wanted to, me to, because, because the long-termness has something to do with it. I mean, people know that I'm not just kind of flipping things and all that. I'm here to fix the foundation, the fundamentals, and build on it. Uh, and I, I can't say that I'll be successful every single time. Where'd you get that from? Um, that mindset. I don't know. I have one of those things that I always felt when, even when people were saying, "Oh, this company is, is dying or not doing well" or something. You know, I, never, I, I, I always think that this is kind of over exaggeration. Mm. Uh, it is one of those things. It, you know, never. I'm kind of having one of those never say die attitudes. I guess that's probably why. Um, Growing up in Hong Kong, what was the environment like? What were your influences? What were you seeing either in terms of businesses or ideas and ventures that inspired you? Does it go back to that at all? Oh yeah, all? that's a lot of inspiration. I mean, that's really, uh, you know, I mean, starting from my, my family, my father and all that, but, but more so that I want to make it broader so that I don't get overly emotional about things. It's okay. You know, my, 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 um, my parents were refugee escaping communists at the time. Yeah. So, you know, they, you know, my father had a Chinese degree. It's a, I'll go into a British colony, you know, nobody recognizes an accountant. And so you have to do odd jobs and being, book, being bookkeeper and get, instead of accountant. So life was difficult. But then life was difficult for everybody growing up in right. Hong Kong at the time, because this is, you know, other than if you're a British, you're, you're not, you know, you're, you're, unless you're an expatriate or something, you, 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 you're struggling you know, to make ends meet. And so seeing that and seeing all these big, big ideas and big corporation that started from a seat, you know, um, I, I got many of those stories. Was it about taking the long view? Because that is a, a foundational element to so many immigrant family stories, is the parents know that they have to take a step backward professionally in order to set the foundation for their kids to have a better chance. And so they take the long view and say, this is gonna be better for our family, for my children, even though it's tough right now. Exactly, I think the long view and the persistency, you, 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 learn, not, you, you learn not to get overly hung up on the setback. Because still, multiple times you have, you know, a couple of step forwards, a couple of step backwards. And, and you just have to deal with it, mental toughness, 
is all I wanted, you know, what I wanted to say. It's like I'm me playing golf, you know. When I hit a bad shot, I thought about a next shot. I actually don't think about a bad shot I hit. And I see a lot of people start throwing cups and <laughs> hitting the ground and the turf and stuff. But that's an attitudinal thing, you know. You don't, we never really expect that success will just hand it to you. A, you have to earn it, and B, if it doesn't happen, just try again, you know. And this, you know, the key is about the journey. It's not about exactly everything you want, you need. What was the hardest time period in your career? I, I think way back when, when I wasn't given the opportunities. Uh, and that How was far tough. back was that? Oh, that was when I was engineer uh, in the, uh, I started as an engineer in 1979, mm -hmm. so like early 80s. Um, you, know, I, you know, I learned the ropes and do a lot of work and did, did a lot of good things, and but really never got the the opportunity. I got the recognition, you know, money and all that stuff. So that's not the issue. The issue has been always been, you know, the it, it, opportunity to do something more, to do something to different. Lead. Yeah, to it's, be in it's charge. Because, because, well, because we were stereotyped. I didn't even want yeah. to lead. I just want to do something else. Uh -huh. I, and to learn more, um, I, I remember I was an engineer. If I if I didn't really try to fight through that, I'll probably be an engineer. <laughs> I'd probably be a chief scientist somewhere right now, you know, there's something like that. But but I wanted I wanted to do something different. I wanted to learn how to interact with outside and marketing and what does that mean and it was, it, it, uh, all that thing. And it, it was difficult for me to. So there was a period of time I felt very slight, you know, slightly unhappy. How'd you get through it? Well, I keep asking and they tell me why it's not a good idea. And, I, I went and learned. You know, one other thing about you, you, back then, by the way, you know, they they were they were right on certain things. You and I wouldn't be sitting here having this conversation because I was, you know, very nervous about having conversation, making speeches, and making presentation, um, and and felt inadequate. Uh -huh. and maybe you know, and so I have to overcome that. You know, public speaking and all that. Now I just, you know. BS my way through. <laughs> Just like everybody else. That's, that's, how, that's, that's how like everybody done. else. That's yeah, how exactly. it's done. Right. But was it, was it uh, a particular opportunity that you got? Um, was it having to maybe take, leave a place or take a, a, a demotion in order to get the opportunity you wanted? How did it, how did it come together that you yeah, got to Yeah, actually prove? a couple of times I did. I, um, I, I'll, I'll give you the Sybase story. You know, I, I got to Sybase. Actually, I was making more money running a much bigger business with Siemens before I took the side page job. But I really wanted to do software. I was in hardware, I was building systems, I was building mainframe, which is nothing wrong with that. But I see that that's not where the world is going. The world is going software. And this is 1990s, 90s. Yeah. So I decided like to 98 take, you went to side right? 97, yeah. 97. So, so I decided to, you know, to, to literally take a step back both on compensation and title mm. and became the president um, of Sybase. In 1997, uh, it turns out to be the right choice. Right, I mean, in my mind, it turns out to be the right choice. It, it looks that way because it was a bit of a fixer-upper. So Siemens at the time, perhaps more prestigious, you were making more money, but you went there and were able to prove your breadth. Yeah, it gave me the opportunity. I, I learned a lot, which is wonderful. And the same thing, I came here at BlackBerry. I learned a lot. Uh, I contribute a lot. I learned a lot, mm -hmm. and, and I think that's the way it ought to be. And uh, we're trying new things and. That's where the funds come from. I want to talk about the future of work. When okay. you look at the type of workforce that BlackBerry is going to need over the next five years, what kinds of people are you looking for? It's different from what you might have been looking for five years ago. And maybe what kind of tools are you using to communicate with that workforce, to motivate it that are different than, than what you would have used in the past? Uh, that's, that's a really great question. Um, I. Um, I think we need to start injecting an element of growth. Um, you know, we came from a background we want to stabilize, we did. We want to set a direction, we did. Now, each and every one of us, including myself, I think we need to start focusing on a growth mindset, which is different. Right. right. And, and I hope that we could balance the two, meaning that you don't grow into trouble, or, or, or you, 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 you stay grounded, but you really have to be started growing. So I think talents in growth and growth oriented people, um, you know, really kind of high growth entrepreneur, uh, that spirit, that knowledge, that, that, that experience, 
it will be useful for so us. So you might have to do some acquisitions. I got to, that's acquisition and, and recruiting. Yeah, different kind of recruiting. Yeah, different kind of recruiting. People maybe who are uh, looking for a different kind of risk, yes. not the risk that the company's going to go under. Exactly. But, but the, the risk, uh, taking on a, the sort of risk that could lead to higher growth, where exactly. they want to try yeah. different things. And we also, I mean, like people like myself, also need to be a little bit more open and to let them try it. Because, you know, high risk stuff have high rewards, but high risk, right? By definition, it, will, it might, might not happen. So in the past five years, having to ground this, I, I tend not to take that many risks. A more calculated, more traditional approach to things. So I, you know, make sure you pick more, you, you take in more money than you spend, it's a good formula. <laughs> right. uh, but now you might have to orientate it a little bit differently. You're on the boards of Wells Fargo and Disney. I'm not gonna ask you for board secrets here. I'm gonna ask, two very different companies, by the way. I'm no longer on Wells, but. Oh, no longer on yeah, Wells. Right. Um, well, then, then you're sleeping a little better at night. You've been on the board of Wells Fargo, yes. still on Disney. Disney, this period of expansion through Lucasfilm, Marvel, these acquisitions that they did that, that got them ownership of modern mythology. Uh, Wells Fargo, huge scandal on accounts and treatments of people's personal data. So what's the pitch that these boards make for why John Chen needs to be on the board? What are they, what are they coming to you specifically to add? I think, I, I think, um uh, I'm very privileged on both those of those boards. Uh, one has a little trouble right now, but it will overcome. And one is doing extremely well. And 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 I, it to me, uh, notice that, you know, I it's something that I don't know anything about. Uh, you know, the media business I don't know anything about. I mean, at, at least not at the time when I joined the board. <laughs> and, and the banking business, other than doing uh, doing business with them, I actually don't know a lot about it either. It, I benefited tremendously. But why'd I, they ask you? Um, I, I think you know what I could bring is hopefully technology and maybe some element of global trades and especially in Asia Pacific and you know I, I guess that's it. Yeah. Favorite Disney movie? Up. Up. I love Up. Jack Dorsey, Jack Dorsey, also on the board, Ratatouille, he says. Ratatouille? Is, yeah. It's wonderful, too. <laughs> I, but, but up, I mean, the section, I had never seen anything better than the section that described the life in the beginning. I, you know, it's, it's very sustained. I mean, that production is unbelievable. John Chen, CEO of BlackBerry, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, John.